Hello once again out there to all my fellow Fixit employees. Welcome back to another episode of How to Satisfactory. In the last couple episodes we've been working on efficiency and that means our factory should be running pretty smoothly at this point as long as you've been following along. Although I personally am still having an issue with that line right there. Let me see if I can get in a little closer. This one right here still seems to be, I don't know, piling up and I, I haven't figured out why. I thought I fixed it earlier because I just went on there and just removed a bunch of stuff that was maybe just clogging things up. Nope, didn't fix it, it's clogging back up again. Let me know if you guys out there are also having the same issue with that because I'm still trying to figure out how to solve that. Hmm, interesting. But even more importantly, we have now moved on to the next phase of our construction. If we open up our hub, we see we have new tiers. We've got tier five and tier six. You know, I haven't even finished really like tier four yet. We still gotta do fix it blueprints, hyper tubes. Mm. Not really sure where I'm gonna put any hyper tubes in at, so I just haven't really bothered with that. But we probably should get to it at some point. Also want to show off fix it blueprints. Did have somebody request that I go into that in an episode. So maybe that might be the next one. Don't really know yet. Uh, but I know a lot of you guys are wanting me to get into oil and that's pretty much what we're going to try to get started on very, very soon, but not this episode. Because in order to unlock oil, we are also going to need to make, looks like some motors, and we need encased industrial beams. Hmm. Well, we got to get those going. So that's what today is going to be about. We're going to add in another machine in order to make industrial beams. All right, so my plan today is to add another assembler here on the top floor in between our first and our second one. That's gonna be the easiest spot in order to integrate it into the lines and bring up the components and stuff we need to make the industrial beams. And I'll be 100% honest, I'm not really a fan of doing this because we worked really hard on getting all these things together and now we're going to have to take things out in order to add another one in. So ideally, what I would prefer to do is had all this kind of planned out way in advance instead of having to make modifications constantly because I feel like that's just, it's complicated for to explain and it's complicated to add in and it might even be complicated for you guys to understand at home. So I don't really like doing it. However, this is something I'm gonna to try to take care of when we do the next series after the game comes out of early access, when we restart the entire How to Satisfactory series and do things even better, a better factory layout, everything is going to happen at that point. But we're not there yet. We still probably got a couple more updates to go in the game before we can get to that. So hopefully I should have time to finish everything in this one and at least get you guys a good guide point. But in the meantime, we got to do what we got to do, and that means we're going to have to take out this assembler and this assembler, as well as the lines going into them. So go ahead and do that real quick. And once you have everything removed on this floor, go ahead and copy an assembler here. We're going to turn that around that way. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these one right here. So this one is in that middle one right in between. So we're going to put this one right in the center on these two tiles. Make sure it is lined up right there. That's great. And we're going to bring this one over and put it in the middle so that the output is right in the middle between those. That's good. And then we're going to put one more down here right in the center of that. Right there. All right. All right. So if we take a closer look at our assemblers and how they're placed, you can see that this one is right on this foundation right here. It's also lined up with the first one down there on that end. So that should be correct. Come down here, the output is right in between these two foundations. And then this one is going to be centered perfectly on the foundation. And then this one is, of course, exactly where it was all the time before. It's right in between the two foundations. Same as our first one, no, our middle one right here. So with our new assemblers in place, what we're gonna do is go in and set these to the components that they're gonna make. So our first one here is going to be stators. And I actually have an alternate for that now too, because I've been out kind of exploring and grabbing some alternate recipes. And one of the ones I have is alternate quick wire stators, which uses steel pipes and quick wire in order to make these stators instead of regular wire. So not gonna use that. That's actually a pretty good recipe, but we're, we're gonna go to the regular stators for this one because this is how we have everything planned in the factory in order to work. And I don't wanna mess with the uh, quick wire and stuff just yet. All right, so our second machine here is going to make our encased industrial beams, but there's something here that I want to show you. Now, one of the reasons that I went out exploring for alternate recipes is to try to find this one right here, encased industrial pipes. 
So the regular industrial beams use steel beams and concrete in order to make the beams. In case industrial pipes are the exact same thing, however, they use steel pipes and concrete. Now, I would prefer to use this one because it actually takes pipes instead of beams. And we're already having to produce a lot of beams in order to keep up. And the steel pipes we don't need as many of. So we have some extras there that we can produce. So it's better in order to use the encased industrial pipes. However, if you do not have this, in, this uh, alternate recipe, don't worry, we can still use the encased industrial beams here as well. We're just gonna have to up production just a little bit of beams. Not a biggie, but I do recommend if you haven't already went out and tried to find some more alternate recipes, go out, search for some crash sites, see what you can find, and hopefully you can get the encased industrial pipes because I'm going to show this one first and then I'm going to show how to integrate the beams. In the meantime though, let's go ahead and choose industrial pipes here. And our third one is going to be still making our versatile frameworks, the same as it was before. The only thing we pretty much have done here is just add an extra machine in. As you can see, three on that side. Now we have four over here to make these beams. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the other side. I'm going to go to this machine. We're going to copy the settings run back over here to this one and then we're going to paste those settings into that i'm going to do the same thing with that one down there on the end and this one as well so we'll go down here copy the settings come over here and paste the settings so nothing is really changing here except for the fact that we're just adding in an extra machine all right so next up we're going to go ahead and add our mergers onto the end of each of our assemblers here making sure to line that up with the one on the end there so there we go that's going to be fine. If it's yellow, it's good. And then connect in our belts. Make sure these are Mark three. All right, go ahead and connect in your last lines to connect all of these up. And then next we're going to do power. So for these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that one right down here because that's a double wall outlet and I don't actually have anything saved on my hotbar for a double wall outlet. We're going to line these up right here. Looks like that's perfect right there. Come down here, do the same thing. That one should be pretty close to right there. I mean, we, we could put it right there, sure. And then this one here, which should also be probably right there. There we go. And then just connect our power lines up. Don't forget to connect the pieces up here on top as well, because we do have to get power to each of these poles in order to get powers to our machine. All right, so next up is going to be putting our conveyor lifts back into our machines to bring the material up into them. So what I'm gonna do is take out this right here and some of these floors in between. This way we can kind of see what we're doing underneath of here. And we're going to take and put a conveyor lift right here. Make sure it's in Mark III. I'm gonna drop down, we're gonna bring this down and we're gonna turn it that way. This way we can connect our line of copper wire right back up to that with no problem. Now remember our staters need the copper wire and they need steel pipes. So our steel pipes are coming in right here. But instead of just going ahead and putting them back in, this is a reason why I decided to put the extra assembler in between the first and the second one right here is because we have both our beams and our pipes coming in right here next to each other. So no matter which recipe you use to make these industrial beams, you're gonna have the material right here to split off of because this machine needs the pipes and this one down here needs the beams. So you would just either split off of the pipes going into this one, or you would split off the beams going into that one. So since we are using the pipes, this is how we're gonna do this. I am going to take a conveyor lift. We're gonna put it right here. We're gonna drop it down, and I'm gonna turn it this way, just like that. So the input is going in like so. Now this one also needs pipes, so I'm going to go ahead and bring a conveyor lift down here, and we're going to do that. And then I'm going to put a splitter, really easy, right here in between these two. So that should work. Make sure everything is turned the right way. That is perfect. Connect these up using Mark III belts, like so. And then we're gonna come back here to the back and we're going to connect in our pipes right here. There we go. Now we got pipes going into that machine to make stators. We got pipes going into this machine in order to make our encased industrial, I'm gonna call them beams, but encased industrial pipes is the name of the alternate recipe. Now this right here, I'm gonna delete this line. 
just like that. Now you may also have to change this line up a little bit in order to make it come in straight and then go and connect into uh, this splitter right here. If you need to do that, don't worry, that's fine. You have space for here to work with, so not a biggie. Now the next material that the encased industrial beams need is concrete. Well, we're gonna get to the concrete shortly, but let's go ahead and add in a conveyor lift here for that. So I'm gonna turn it this way facing towards the other side just like that what we're going to do is bring it up down there bring it along down through here and then into this machine through the front like that but let's head back over here to these two so this one is going to need modular frames and steel beams all right so let's go ahead and remove this right here where these frames are coming in at let's just get rid of that line down there and here and we'll probably have to remove this merger right here too. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and connect that back to complete that line. Uh, I don't know why I had a, wait, what? There, okay, that's fixed. All right, now we're going to come down here and I'm going to bring in, let's see, a conveyor lift mark three down and I'm going to have it go like that, towards that direction. That'll work just fine. And then I'm just going to connect this in just like, yeah, I'll put it right there to the edge and then bring it in like so, just like that. All right, there goes our beams up there to start making our pieces for that. So our versatile frame works. Now we need to get what modular frames in here, but if you notice our wire is in the way. So let's go ahead and remove our wire real quick. We'll fix this in a minute. In fact, uh, let's go ahead and fix this now. So this is coming in this way. Not a problem. What we're gonna do is just turn that. So we're going to take this, put it right there, and then have it come out and in probably right there. Actually, you know what? Not 100% happy with this. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that floor hole, right? And then let's drop down here. So this is coming in here. Let's just uh, have it, let's line all these up. That's a much better idea, actually. So let's take a floor hole, put this up here like that, and then bring a Mark III conveyor lift down, turn it that way towards our wire, and we can't forget to actually put our wire back in here if we can get around these machines somehow. I think we'll have to do it from the back. I don't see a way to do this. Um, let me remove this, drop down here, there we go. And then we'll just jump back up here and then jump up to here and then put our line back into that. And I've messed up because I didn't put that the right direction. See, that's a common mistake that I actually make. So we're hit R in order to reverse that as an input. There we go. And then take that, connect that into that. There we go. Now all those are lined up. I think that's gonna look a lot smoother. Let's get back up on top of that. All right, so now that we're back on top and we've placed everything back the way we had it previously, Let's go ahead and put a output here. That's good. Now, let's go ahead and put a conveyor lift here facing that direction because that's going to have to come out there. And I think, yeah, I think no matter what I do, I'm going to have to have that come out a different way here. We're going to have to expand this line out right here. There we go. Put another panel in there. And let's see here. Let's get rid of this line, this line, and let's bring these in here. I'm gonna bring it kind of right next to that. So that's good. And then we'll bring it in and we'll just sort of line it up here. That's probably going to work there. And then right into that machine, just like that. All right, so now our wire is heading back into that. All right, so now we need to put the modular frames back into this machine. So what we will do is all of these are coming down this way, right? Okay, we will grab a regular merger and I'm gonna line that up with this here. So right there, that should work just fine. But we're also going to need a smart splitter. So let's do, copy that there, put that directly in front of it with the inputs coming down this way. Essentially, we're just rebuilding all of this. So, and there we go. Put a Mark III belt in between those two. Connect this back up to this. And connect that into that. 
All right, now we need to set our splitter. So this one, um, we're going to put none to the middle. To the left is going to be modular frames, like that. And to the right is going to be overflow. All right, so now everything should be splitting into that. Yeah, that should work just fine. All right. Now, if you don't have the recipe for the encased pipes, what you would do here instead is, like I said, instead of splitting off of the pipes right here that go into this machine, just move this over to here. So since this one uses the beams, and this one will be using beams if you're using that recipe, then you would just put the splitter right here in the middle of these two, and then have it split that. It's that, it's that simple. It honestly is. However, what's complicated is getting our concrete up to this machine. That's where it's going to be a little bit of an issue. So let's go ahead and put our floor back down through here, like that. We're gonna come up on top here. We're gonna make sure all of our machines are set and working. 100% getting the pipes and wire it needs. All right. This one, don't worry about this one yet because we don't have concrete. So move on to the next one down here. All right, and versatile frameworks, 100%. All good. And this one here, 100%. It's getting the wire and the stators it needs. All right, fantastic. Now what we're going to do is the other side. So let's go ahead and take out, once again, our machines, our assemblers over there. Take out our mergers, take out our lines, and our lifts. Once you cleared off all that space, go ahead and copy what we were doing from this side into the other one. So we'll just line those up like so. That looks good. And then put this one right there. You should have another guideline now to work with. So that's going to make lining these up a whole lot easier. And put our last assembler in. All right, so now we just have to connect these over here up the same way we did over here. So again, we're going to take our mergers. going to put them on the end of each assembler. Just like that. We're going to need to make sure that it is facing the right direction, though. So there we go. All right, that is lined up. And we'll put this on the end of each of these. And once again, connect our belts up, making sure we get the ones in between the machine and the mergers like that. And then there to there. And make sure these are Mark III because, trust me, if you're not using Mark III's right there, you're going to have a bad time because then you have to take all these out in order to change those belts, which is, it's a bit of a pain. But let's just use Mark III while we're here. Once again, we are going to take out our floor so we can work with our lifts gonna take out that and let's take out our belts here bringing in our steel and stuff and yeah that should be fine for now and we're gonna use mark three conveyor lifts there we go push this one down I'm gonna drop down here and make it easier to work with that's coming straight in that way that's perfect go ahead and connect that to that that's gonna bring in our wire to this machine all right and then we're going to go ahead and put this one like that and split it right here like so bring this one down facing that direction so we can put our splitter right there in the middle of that let's go ahead and do that now go ahead and make sure that's facing the right direction put that there connect and connect and then go ahead and bring our pipes in right here uh, let's see here and do yeah right there so back to and into that straight perfectly there goes our pipes into that um let's see let's go ahead and fix this right here real quick while we're here go ahead and take that out that line get that floor hole right there and then let's put another floor hole right in the middle between those two and let's see am i gonna go that direction yes i am I'm gonna go that direction with that it is an out no, it is an input. So we change that to an output. There we go. And then we run that down like so. There we go. Take out that right there and refix that line into there. There we go. Now we can put our foundation back right there. Let's bring our conveyor lift down here. And then we should just be able to connect these lines straight up again like that. Bring another conveyor lift down here face it that way like that now we have to take out this splitter right here this line this line that line and you know what we'll just take out that one too. reconnect that back up to that there we 
go. Okay. Now we need to make sure that all this is in there. So let's grab a regular merger right here. Let's make sure it's lined up with where we need it. So we're going to be coming out of here. You can hold control. Sometimes control just doesn't want to work to line these up. So you just got to eyeball it. And that's perfectly fine. Then we're going to add our smart splitter in here coming this way. Like so. Line that up. Put our Mark III belt in between these two. Connect that back up to that down there. Probably want to do it from the other side, though. There we go. And connect that into that. Now we set our splitter. So the right output is going to be modular frames. Nothing to the center. And to the left is going to be overflow. Now we'll add one more foundation onto the end of this, like we did the other side. Take that out. And at this point, we just have to put our inputs for our wire or cable I should say so we'll just bring this out like that and then put that into there there we go wires going in let's see these machines oh you know what we didn't do we have not set our machines up on top so all right let's hop back up here and what I will do we're gonna set this one once again to the encased industrial pipe now, again, the reason I'm using this alternate recipe is because it is the better recipe since we're not using as many pipes. We have the ability to create more pipes off of the material that we have coming in. Um, and, you know, because we're using a lot of beams to begin with and it takes more to produce beams than it does pipes. It's just the better option. It honestly is. Going to go over here. We're going to copy these settings over to this machine here. There we go. Settings are pasted. And let's come down to this machine. And this one is going to be our... Uh, was, was this Versatile Frameworks? Yes, Versatile Frameworks, I think. Can't remember. Yeah, Versatile Frameworks. Okay, so then we just jump over to the other side. We're going to copy the settings off this machine. Go back over here to this one. And paste. There we go. Don't forget to hook up your power as well. So we'll do that here real quick. And run our lines. And once again, let's not forget to put our power lines up on the back here as well. Connecting all these so that we actually get power to each machine. There we go. All right. So now we have both sides set up with a brand new assembler to make our encased industrial beams. Now, adding the concrete into the mix, is it going to be that complicated? I mean, it's a little complicated, but it ain't that complicated. What we're going to do is come down here to the second floor. We're going to walk over here to where these conveyor lifts are taking these parts up to the top right there. We are going to then grab a floor hole, and we're going to put it up here on top. That's a pole. I need a floor hole. There we go. And we're going to put it right in the middle of that foundation, just like that. But we're going to bring it one over this way like that there we go all right take out this floor panel right here this foundation and that's going to reveal all of our inner workings down here such as our concrete line right there it's going to reveal the copper right here so what we're going to do is we're going to take these out we're going to take out the copper sheeting we're going to take out the concrete and let's go ahead and just take out these poles and lines here as well there we go all right that should work Let's go ahead and copy a conveyor lift Mark III. Make sure it's a Mark III. Everything in your factory should be Mark III at this point. Um, you may have forgotten one or two. I know I probably have, so that's fine, just as long as you can remember to try to fix them if you see them. All right, so we're going to bring that down to here, and we're going to make sure that is an input, not an output like it is now. So let's turn that to orange or yellow or whatever you guys want to call it there, and bring it down to right there. All right, we are good. Now, we are going to grab a splitter, just a normal splitter here. Turn it so that the input is facing the concrete right there. Bring it out, line it up with the conveyor lift and the concrete. And then connect that up using your conveyor belts, Mark three. There we go. And we'll come down here and connect that into that. And that should bring our concrete in there and going up. All right, next, let's go to the other side over here. We're going to do sort of the same thing over here. So let's remove this foundation. Let's throw a foundation or a floor hole right there. 
And let's bring that lift down right there. And we're going to bring it down to right there. That's good. And we're going to remove this line. There we go. Now we're going to put in right here, we're going to use a smart splitter. Not a regular splitter like we did the other side, but a smart one. So let's change that to the smart splitter with the input coming in from the other side. So it's going to come across like that. Line it up with our two conveyor lifts, but more so over this way. So it's going to be right on the end of where that like suction cup thingy is. And then right there. That is perfect right there. All right. Now let's set our splitter up to the left is going to be overflow and to the right is going to be concrete. There we go. And this one is going to be none in the center. All right. That is all good there. Let's connect our conveyor belts up there. And then we've got to connect this one into that one. All right. That should be good now. Let's go ahead and remove this conveyor lift right here. And yeah, let's go ahead and remove this floor too so we can kind of see what we're doing down here. Let's drop down. And we're going to remove the cable line now. So we can have a little bit of room to work. So let's make sure we have all of this kind of fixed up a little bit here. Uh, let's just remove the cable line there too. And there, that's fine, leave that. All right, now. What we want to do is we want to get the lines to come over here like into this. So we are going to grab a conveyor belt. We're going to bring this out maybe just a little bit. Doesn't have to be far. And then we're going to bring it up. Let's see. That's probably to here to this line right there. And we're going to turn it so that it's going that way. We're going to do the same thing down here. We're going to bring this kind of turn it so it's on the line why it doesn't like that. I guess we'll bring it out a little bit and then turn it. Yeah, that's more like it. All right, and then these two should connect right up and they should be perfectly straight. Fantastic. Now, this right here, this is where our copper sheeting's coming out. So we want to bring this over. Let's bring it all the way out to, to this line right here. And then we're gonna bring it up to there. And then we're going to turn that. And yeah, this is this is actually fine. We would just want to make sure that it's going this way. All right, and then here, remember we removed this conveyor lift. So what we're going to do is take this and we're going to copy that and we're going to put that right on the end of that. We're going to bring it back up. We're going to turn it this way now, like that. There we go. Let's put our floor back. And we're going to bring this out right there. Actually, let's just bring this over to, say, here. Is that straight? Make sure it's straight. I'm OCD about that. You don't have to be, but I am. I am totally OCD on that. And then connect that into that. There we go. Now, this is, with any luck, you shouldn't have a problem. And all your sheets should be moving along the lines. You can see the concrete is moving pretty good now, too. All right, perfect. We're going to bring this out to here. And we're going to move this up to, uh, let's see, right there. Let's just bring that to here and then bring that along over through here. I'm going to bring it to like right in the middle there somewhere. All right. And then I just got to connect this up to here. So I'm going to bring that to here, turn it. And then it should line up right there. So I'll bring it back to and there. At this point, you guys should be sufficient at being able to place your conveyor belts and stuff down and getting them to turn the right way and, and get them everything kind of straight. After 20 some episodes, you guys have probably learned that by now. So I won't go into a whole lot of detail about that. But yeah, so we just want to run our lines down through here like this and make sure everything is running perfectly. All right, that should be correct. So let's hop back up to the top up here and get out of the holes. We want to put our foundations back over top of that to cover our mess up down there. Yep. 
it uh, looks like on this side I have a foundation right there instead of there so I'm gonna fix that all right and yes I know I have conveyor belts or lifts running through floors I'm getting a lot of well not a lot I get a few people complaining about how I take conveyor lifts and run them through foundations and I just like why does it matter why, why is that the war that you want to choose I don't understand but anyway um, all right so we're gonna take a foundation cover that back up essentially we're just replacing the foundations we removed and fixing everything up now let's climb back up to the top up here all right so next we just have to run the concrete into our two machines so we're going to grab a mark 3 conveyor lift we're gonna place it on top of our conveyor hole we made just like that and then we're just gonna run this line all the way down through here and it should connect straight in to our machine right there make sure that works that is straight and there comes our concrete fantastic now let's head over to the other side do the exact same thing over here slide underneath of your belts and then let's see let's grab that place that like that and conveyor belt all the way down here into that machine boom look at that we are done I don't know why I have a hole there oh wait I do know why I have a hole there because I never placed these back from earlier I probably have the exact same thing on the other side so uh, let's remember to replace our floors down all right so let's go check our machines let's see what what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong here all right let's see here we have encased industrial pipes needs 28 steel pipes a minute and 20 concrete per minute so if you double that that's a lot that's at least 40 concrete so i don't want to make that many let's make this 50 percent and try to make this somewhat efficient here all right 50 percent that is going to make two encased industrial beams per minute uh, we're going to need 10 concrete and 14 steel pipes per minute. So that's going to be, we have to multiply that by two because remember we have one on the other side too. Well, we also need to put that to 50% too. Let's jump over here and change that to 50% here as well. Okay, so that's going to be, what, 28 and 10. Uh, 28 and 20, but we have to add the steel pipes in from this side. So... 28 and 24 uh, I'm bad at math luckily there is an in-game calculator here so 24 plus 28 we need a total of 52 steel pipes per minute let's just make it an even 55 that should be fine right maybe we can make a few more I don't know but we also need to make sure that we have 20 concrete coming up here as well so let's head down to the very bottom floor all right so Taking a look at our concrete here, let's see what we got going on. Each of these machines I have set to 50%, making seven and a half per minute. Hmm, seven and a half per minute. Let's see, so that's two of these is 15. Add another seven and a half. That should be enough concrete. Everything should be flowing correctly. Uh, is all these have a hundred percent? Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah we should be good as far as concrete goes all right that maybe it's just gonna take a minute to kind of back up a little bit uh but now we got to worry about our pipes so let's go make sure we are making 55 pipes per minute all right so currently it looks like we are making 11 per minute in each machine let's see we have three machines that is 33 uh that's not enough how much um how much steel are we needing for this? 16 and a half per minute times three. Uh, let me do the math on that. 16.5 multiplied by three, 49 and a half. So I think we're producing 50 in this machine, right? Yes. Hmm. Okay. We could figure this out to, uh, let's see if I need 55. Let's do the math on that. All right. So 55 divided by three, each of these machines need to make 18, yeah, about 18.34. Uh, that should work. All right, so if I know that I need that, let's see what that's gonna come out to. 18, 
91.7. Wow. Okay, so that's a uh, 27.51 steel ingots per minute. That is a lot of pipes. More so than we needed in the other one. 27.51 multiplied by 3 is a total of 82.53 steel. Uh oh. You know what? I don't think we're going to be able to make that much. Mm, no, I do not. Um, let's go back to our encased industrial pipes because that, that's a whole lot of steel, I mean, to be making right now out of that. So, All right, so I'm trying to figure out how we can use less steel pipes. So one of the things down here we are using pipes for is our first machine down here, which is using making stators, making four per minute. So I checked down there on the other end, and we only need 1.75 for that. So we could... Cut this down to maybe three per minute. That would only be nine pipes, so that's uh, at least six pipes less than what we what we did need. We could cut this down further to two. Forty percent clock speed, six steel pipes per minute. Let's see, that's eighteen. Uh, well, no, not eighteen. Twelve. I don't know where my math is going wrong at, but it's definitely going wrong. Um, all right, and then here we're making two of these per minute. Now, what if I just want to make, I don't know, one of these a minute. What if I want to leave these alone? All right, let's see. Um, 12 and 14. How many, how many is that? Wait, 14 times 2, that's 28. 28 and 12. 28 and 12 is, uh, that's better, actually. Let's see. 28 plus 12, that's 40. 40, 40 I might be able to work with. Let's go see if we can work with that. All right, so that particular case, let's see, 40 divided by 3. Each of these needs to make 13.34. All right, let's see if we can do that. If we need, uh, we'll say 14 steel pipes per minute. That's a 70% clock speed. That's 21 steel ingots. That That is doable. That is uh, 63 steel ingots per minute. I think... I can get 63 steel ingots per minute out of this. Let's see here. Um, 63. That's 140% clock speed. That's going to make 63 steel ingots on this one side. I think I can live with that. All right. Let's go ahead and set this to 70% on each of our steel ingots over here. So there we go. All right, so each of our constructors making steel pipes are now making 14, and we're using 63 steel ingots per minute. That, that we can work with. All right, so there's only one last thing to do, is make sure that both sides are set to this. So let's head back up to the top up here to our machines. So I'm just going to hop, jump, and skip up here to this, jump over our machines here, or get stuck somewhere in the process. There we go. Uh, hop over here. And all right, so here we go. So on this side, so our, our stators need to be set to 40% and this needs to be set to 50%. All right, so I've already got that one set to 50%. Let's just set this to 40% here. So there we go. All right, now we should be good. That is um, actually probably using more wire than we need. According to this, it is using 100% efficiency. Um, this should definitely be at 100% efficiency. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, we got more wires probably going through our machines now because we're using less of that. Okay, there we go. We've got the machine set in, so uh, we're now making that. Um, oh, you know what? Even though we're making the uh the encased beams we're not putting them into any sort of storage so we need to figure that out all right so i'm looking over my storage and i do not have enough storage currently for everything that we're making so i'm kind of thinking we have a couple of these storage boxes that are using the, their space for pieces that should be going into the space elevator such as versatile frameworks and well right now just versatile frameworks um, what if we take the versatile framework one, which is that one right there, and we fix it so that instead of going into storage, 
it goes actually straight into the space elevator. That is an option. It's going to take a little bit more to fix, but you know what? I think it's worth it. So I've been looking in how we're going to send the space elevator parts directly to the space elevator, and I figured out a way. However, it's more than I want to get into in just this video. So instead, what I decided was one thing we don't need that we're actually making is the smart plating. The smart plating is just about full up there. We don't really need any more of it, and well, not at least not yet. We will need some more later. But for now, I think let's just go over here and go to the second box right here and this should be the one that's making the smart plating let's just turn this into the encased industrial beams instead and we're going to start sending those up into that second storage box up there and then i'm going to come up here to this box because the smart plating isn't something we need to actually construct anything right now at the moment so i'm going to take everything that's in the smart plating box and i'm just going to throw it in the trash and look at there, our first encased industrial beam has now made it into our storage box. So we're making two per minute each side, that's four per minute. So yeah, this should get filled, oh, we already got two in there. It should start to get filled fairly quickly. I mean, not really quick, but yeah, it, it's gonna work. So at some point I am going to come back and I'm going to make a video on how we're going to send everything that is for the space elevator directly to the space elevator instead of into these storage boxes. Uh, but for now, I think this is how we're going to do it. Um, anything we're not going to use as far as like smart plating and stuff is just going to go straight into the giant fix it crusher and that, that should be fine. Um, it's at least going to get us 500 points per minute or per part for the smart plating. Look at that. I've got like 33 coupons. That's a ton of coupons. Uh, we're going to use some of those in the next episode, I think. But yeah, I think that should be fine. Let, let's, uh, hold on. I just want to check and see how many encased industrial beams I have right now at the moment. Yeah, seven. Okay, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a slow process until we get those done. So what I would recommend is let's actually use some coupons real quick. Let's go down here. I'm going to grab all these coupons out. Think. There we go. And let's go over here to the awesome shop. Let's go into organization and let's grab the label signs. Add that to cart and the display sign bundles. There we go. And check out with that. All right, so now that we got our signs, open up our build menu by hitting Q. And then we can actually choose one of these here. Now there's a couple of options. I think I kind of like square sign one meter. And we can actually put that right on top of the storage box right there. There we go. And then we can go in here. We can actually fix this to display the image of what's in here. So for example, this one is screws. All right, so let's find the picture of the screws. So right here where it says select image, we can actually go in here and look, there's screws, select image. If you don't like the background, you can change that in colors here. So let's go with a nice black and there we go and that's pretty good hit escape and boom now you have a sign there that tells you what's in there so we no longer have to actually point at it with our fix it tool and see what's in there we can actually do that now you are going to need some crystals for this i just happen to have a couple something like 18 crystals which was enough to do maybe a couple of signs maybe three uh not that many so we'll have to go back up to the crystal farm to get more crystals if you're going to do all of these but that's something that you can do in between the this episode and the next so while you're waiting for the next episode you can go ahead and label all your storage boxes oh and before i forget there is one more thing we have to do we need to come back down here to the end of the factory and we need to cover up this little bit of a mess that we have here with our lifts so what i'm going to do this is just really simple honestly we're just going to grab a four meter foundation and then I'm going to put that right here on the bottom and make sure our zoop vertical is on. And we're just going to put those vertically just like that. And then we're going to come over here to the other side. We're going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to copy that real quick, bring it over here. There we go. Push that up to there. And we're going to cover that up. There we go. Now, I will fix this a little bit later because I know some people are now going to complain that I just have the conveyor belts going straight into a wall. Um, you know, I just really wish we had wall holes we could place. We have floor holes. Why can't we have wall holes that we can place anywhere we want? I I feel like that should be a thing we should get. But I digress. So, yeah, that's going to do it. Well, would you look at that? 
that line is actually unclogged now. Huh. I don't know what I did that fixed it, but at least it's fixed now. So, if you've made it this far into the video, well then thank you so much for your review, and I appreciate that you spent your time with me. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, as that tells YouTube to send my video out there into the rest of YouTube land for other people to view it. And as always, I want to give a huge special thanks to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. Specifically, a huge shout out to Dudley Beans. Thank you for your platinum patronage. You are awesome, my man. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. As always, wherever you are in the world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I will see you in the next episode of How to Satisfactory.